orbital space tourism and commercial human space flight have been long, long, long delayed, and everybody has gotten it wrong when it comes to predicting how we will see human space flight increase, commercial human space flight, space tourism, if you will. It has been significantly slower than anybody in the industry predicted. However, we might see an uptick in 2025. The reason why I am hopeful and the numbers are starting to climb for 2025 is that SpaceX announced a new mission yesterday called Fram 2. It is an entirely commercial mission for people aboard the Crew Dragon for three to five days orbiting Earth, and they're going to orbit around the poles in 90 degree inclination, which has never happened before. This is a completely private mission. No governments are involved, at least, you know, there's regulatory bodies and all of that, but no governments are paying for anything. It's entirely funded by a cryptocurrency entrepreneur, Chun Wang. He was born in China. He holds a Malta passport and he has funded himself and three additional people to fly on Fram 2. SpaceX does say that this mission could happen as soon as late 2024. I find that highly unlikely. So I'm putting this in the 2025 bucket. However, we do have some things to look forward to in terms of human commercial space flight in the rest of 2024. I am the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical and I do want to go over the fact that every single market research firm industry analyst has gotten it wrong when it comes to predicting commercial human space flight and specifically I'm talking here about orbital space flight not suborbital although suborbital everyone's gotten it wrong too but that's a topic for another video. I am not going to call out anybody except myself here. So in 2021, I did some analysis where I calculated what we should expect to see SpaceX paying customers be in 2021 through 2024. And this is the reason why I don't do these graphs anymore. I predicted that there would be 40 private astronauts flown by SpaceX in that time period. This is a graph that I made just today. You can tell I don't make fancy graphs. And this is what the time period between 2021 to 2024 actually looked like. In fact, this is SpaceX's entire history in terms of privately funded customers flying on SpaceX Dragon. Now, there is a little, of course, caveat here that 2024 isn't done yet. So I am counting missions in 2024 that have not flown yet. 2025 may have more or less. In fact, that's why I have that uncertainty between seven to 10 in 2025. And presumably there might be missions that are announced and flown in 2025. So let me back up and talk about the history of orbital commercial space flight. And in this case, I am not talking about like space adventures, flying Dennis Tito and others to the International Space Station with government rides, specifically Russian government Roscosmos rides to space. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm narrowing it down to only commercial space flight providers and only orbital commercial space flight providers. SpaceX demonstrated that governments aren't the only ones that can fly people to space, to orbital space when they flew that NASA Demo-2 mission in May of 2020. That was proving that SpaceX was responsible enough and, and could feasibly fly humans safely to the International Space Station and bring them back home. That was the beginning of the NASA missions that SpaceX was contracted to do that they have, without a hitch pretty much, done now all the way up to Crew-8, which is currently docked to the International Space Station. For the purposes of this video, I'm not talking about government contracted missions, so I'm not talking talking about these NASA missions in the graph that I showed you or in the rest of this video. But I did want to mention that SpaceX does have a lot of history flying people that I'm not going to talk about because they are NASA contracted missions. No, I am only talking here about commercial customers. And so those are people who either have paid for themselves or been sponsored by another person or an organization or even a government entity. So there's a gray line here about some of the Axiom customers who have have been sponsored by their governments. Whether I should even include those people in that graph in this tally is up for debate. Also to note is that I'm not counting Axiom employees. Specifically, I'm not counting Michael Lopez Alegria and Peggy Whitson, who flew on private Axiom missions on SpaceX, but they were not paying customers. Again, it's another gray area because SpaceX got paid to fly them. I would count them as commercial astronauts, but not space tourists. Like there, there's so much gray area here. This graph might actually fluctuate depending on your definition of what a commercial customer is. So it could be for 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025, you add one if you believe that the Axiom employed astronaut should be on this graph. And on the other hand, if you believe that the government-sponsored private astronauts that flew on Axiom 
should not be counted on this graph that you might want to take away some of these numbers. Starting in 2021 was the first time that SpaceX flew a completely private mission with four completely private customers, didn't even interact with the International Space Station. That was the Inspiration4 mission. That was a great mission. That flew four private individuals. Only one was a paying customer in the sense that he paid for himself and the other three. The other three were, of course, sponsored by him. So again, it all depends on your definitions here. Axiom Space had initially planned to fly one to three missions to the International Space Station with SpaceX every year. Now NASA put a limit of only two private astronaut missions per year, but even that Axiom has not done. Axiom has only flown one private astronaut mission with SpaceX to the International Space Station every year. That would be in 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025. Technically, Axiom 5 is still on the books for 2025. Starting in 2022, we saw Axiom 1 take off. I personally saw it. I was there as a guest of Mike LA. They had some kinks to work out in terms of the partnership with NASA and how much hand-holding the uh, private astronauts needed to have when they were on board the ISS. But I think they got some of those, most of those kinks uh, knocked out by the time that they flew Axiom 2 in 2023. Axiom 3 flew earlier this year in 2024. Axiom 4 was supposed to fly late this year. That Well, initially Axiom 4 was actually on the calendar for early 2023. That was back in the day. Um, and then it got pushed all the way to April of 2025 is what is looking like right now. Polaris Dawn simile was pushed several years here. I think it was supposed to fly you know, a year or two ago. And now it is on the books. It's, it's almost here. It is scheduled for no earlier than August 26th. So hopefully we will see the Polaris Dawn crew, which includes Jared Isaacman of Inspiration4. Here's another little caveat here. Two of the crew members are actually SpaceX employees. Do they count as a private customer? Jared Isaacman is paying for them, but they are employed by SpaceX. Again, more gray area here for you to consider. I already mentioned that Fram 2, which was announced yesterday, is saying that it could fly as late as this year. I do find that unlikely, although one thing it has going for it is it does not have to involve ISS logistics, which is what is delaying the Axiom 4 mission and the Crew 9 mission and a lot of other things are going on with the ISS right now where there's just so many docking ports. So. Fran 2 is completely independent of that. It's, it's like an Inspiration 4 and a Polaris Dawn where it can just exist in its own timeline without having to worry about what's going on with the ISS or with NASA. And the reason also why Fran 2 might be a bit quicker than Polaris Dawn is that Polaris Dawn had the extra addition of the first commercial spacewalk, EVA. And so you had to have SpaceX develop the spacesuits, the pressure suits, and figure out the logistics and the safety of how do you depressurize the entire Dragon capsule because there's no airlock and who's going out. You know, two members are going out, two members are staying in, and like all of, all of that needs to be coordinated. And, and that is the primary reason why Polaris Dawn was delayed for so long. Fran 2 doesn't have that complication. It does have the cupola, the, the giant dome window that um, Inspiration 4 used, and it has a different trajectory than any other human space flight has ever done before. Other than that, like, I don't think there's any real reason to expect it to be significantly delayed. However, we're already here in mid-August, just announced. Presumably, it could launch at the end of this year, but typically when you say end of a year and you're talking about space flight, especially human space flight, it really means the next year. And Axiom 5 is still on the books for 2025 with no like month or quarter. We also don't know much about Polaris 2. I would highly expect that Polaris 2 does not happen in 2025, but we don't know anything about it yet. And then Polaris 3 is expected to fly on Starship, so that will still be several years out. Axiom is still expecting to fly you know, pretty much continuously. They have their own space station in the works, and they initially are going to have Axiom station attached to ISS and then have it detach once ISS is ready to be deorbited to have a free-flying Axiom station. So presumably Axiom is going to continue to fly with SpaceX and have continuous missions, whether or not they can increase their cadence. I certainly hope so. It might be that NASA is slowing down these Axiom missions because of all the other logistics of the ISS or because of you know NASA planning, whatever it happens to be. But I would expect Axiom to actually ramp up operations to at least two a year, probably more in the near future. And one thing that gives me a little bit of hope here with this Fram 2 mission, I don't know if hope is the right word, but it tells me that there are strong signals that Inspiration4 inspired other people to consider free-flying Dragon missions. The idea now is out there in the public that 
people can use Dragon for their own purposes and not even need to attach to a space station. So we could anticipate now that we have Inspiration 4, we have the Players Program, we have Fram 2, that we could see more free-flying Dragon missions in the future. Now what about non-SpaceX human spaceflight? Well, I have gone at length to say that Boeing Starliner, while initially conceived that it could fly tourism flights after it met its requirements for NASA flying astronauts to the ISS and back. At this point, I do not anticipate that Starliner will ever fly a commercial flight outside of its booked NASA missions. It could be that over the next several years, Starliner irons out all of its bugs and has a great performance record. And therefore, by the time the ISS is retired in 2030 or so, then Starliner could be conceivably considered for transportation of people to other space stations, other commercial space stations. Um, but at this point, I'm not optimistic that that future is going to happen for Boeing. Dream Chaser is another one that is coming down. At the end of this year, they should hopefully have launched a cargo version of Dream Chaser. With enough of a track record with cargo version of Dream Chaser, they should be flying crew version of Dream Chaser, you know, in the next few years. New Glenn is another one where I don't know if they've actually formally announced it, but you can make the logical leap that New Glenn while initially going to carry cargo, you know, uncrewed, it will eventually become a crewed capsule, just like New Shepard has that crew capsule on top. And I did have one of my colleagues from the exploration company tell me that Nix should be flying crew, although I don't know anything about that. I don't know what timeline. So Nix right now is just a cargo delivery vehicle. There's nothing out there publicly that says when or if Nix will be able to fly crew. But if he says so, maybe it's in the works just behind the scenes. Of course, I don't know what that timeline might look like. Nix hasn't flown yet. There's just a lot that could be coming on board. And that's the problem with these projections is a lot of coulds and a lot of you know, maybe and a lot of uncertainties. We look at the direction that things are going in. And the direction says that even though commercial human spaceflight has been off to a slow start, and I'm talking here about orbital and, and suborbital, I suppose, we do have evidence that orbital spaceflight, orbital commercial spaceflight, human space tourism should be increasing over the next few years. I want to leave you with a quote in the Ars Technica article about Fran 2 that I will link below. It is a quote by Janik Mickelson who is the vehicle commander for Fran 2. She is a cinematographer and film director. And she says, I have a pretty gnarly injury background, being in a wheelchair for a good year, and then learning to walk again between three and five years old. I wish I could tell that girl that she can become an astronaut. I want to leave you with that feeling that maybe you personally want to be an astronaut, or maybe you're thinking, you know, only a certain category of people can become astronauts, and it's totally not true. You never know what's going to happen as the industry evolves and as things start to open up. You just don't know what the future holds, so don't give up.